I'm making this video to supply information about the Campark T200 camera. The device is marketed primarily as a trail camera. My usage will be slightly different. I have a piece of remote property with some storage and piece of equipment. And I want to keep track of anybody who happens to trespass. I want to keep a video record of it. So I've set the camera up to store 8 second video clips. Um, what appealed to me about this camera is, first of all, I also have a Campark T80 camera that I used successfully this past hunting season with very good results. So I was comfortable with the brand. Um, second of all, it has a couple of benefits. First, it uses a regular SD card for storage instead of a micro. Makes it a little easier to deal with. But second of all, this camera doesn't require you to remove that SD card to view the images. You can connect to it using Wi-Fi, and I'll show you that a little bit later. The other big benefit is that it has this device on it. This is a solar cell with built-in rechargeable batteries. It just connects on the top of the camera here. They just gave you a convenient uh, socket for it to connect to. You can actually relocate this, mount it in a different place if you need to, but I won't need to, so I'm going to leave it connected to the camera. Um, it's not just a solar cell. It's got batteries built in. While the sun's out, it charges the internal batteries in this unit. A cable connects to the bottom of your camera, and it uses that power to power the camera when the sun goes down. It also uses eight AA batteries. I have installed those as a backup. In the event this gets completely exhausted, the AA batteries will take over. Um, one little idiosyncrasy of this, if you need to open the camera, which I'm going to do to turn it on, you need to disconnect this cable at the bottom because it passes through the outer case of the camera. And you can't open it with it passing through. Now, let me open the camera up. That's just, the latch just snaps back in place. And I will turn the camera on. Now it's on. And let me show you how you connect to it and view images. I'm going to move over here to my Android tablet. And I will show you there's an application or an app called Hunting 4K. If you go looking for it in uh, Google Play or probably the iOS store as well, uh, look for it case sensitive. It should be uppercase H U N T I N G space 4 uppercase K. That's how I found it. And it's this application right here. When the application starts up, the first thing it wants you to do is turn on Bluetooth, which doesn't sound logical. Your Bluetooth should already be on on your viewing device, and you should also have location set to on. Software doesn't like working without the location setting being on. When it says turn on Bluetooth, it's referring to Bluetooth in the camera, not in your tablet. It'll make a connection to the camera. It'll turn on the Bluetooth over there. And then you can select that camera and connect to it. Now you'll have a Bluetooth connection between your viewing device and the camera. The next stage is to turn Wi-Fi on. Now again, Wi-Fi should be enabled on your viewing device already. What you're turning on is basically an access point within the camera. When I turn on Wi-Fi, It'll take a couple of seconds here. And the software comes back and says, all right, uh, I've got Wi-Fi turned on on the camera. Now you need to connect to it. Do it by using the Wi-Fi setting button. This will bring you into your Wi-Fi settings for your viewing device. And you can see the camera showed up. If I connect to it, I now have a connection between my viewing device and the camera. And I return to the software, software confirms it. Okay, And then what I'm seeing is an actual live view of the camera itself. Right now it's just facing a white background. So there are a couple of LEDs that indicate that uh, the Wi-Fi is on. That's what the light is. Um, when you start the app, you're best off to keep it in portrait mode like this. Uh, because in order to get at this stuff in the camera, there's an icon down here. This is basically the gallery icon for information 
in the camera. And at the top of this screen, let's see if I can make this a little more visible. There's a notation for device or local. Device is stuff that's stored in the camera. Local are things that you've downloaded. At the bottom of this screen, you can choose between the camera, which are just uh, images, or video. Now, I've set the camera up to take eight second videos, so I want to move to video. And these are some video clips that I took testing the camera out in that remote location. I just strapped it to a tree just to see how well it would work. And uh, I will be going back and mounting it with the permanent bracket later. I think I can mount it high enough so that it can't be tampered with and it won't be very noticeable. Uh, but this is what's in the device. I've already downloaded these images. You can select the images just by tapping them and then you can use this download icon right here to transfer the images from the camera to local storage. If I go to local you'll see I have a number of clips there already. Once you're in this mode it's helpful to turn the tablet or turn your viewing device to landscape. Uh, the reason that helps is you'll see an awful lot more of the image in landscape orientation. Adjust the angle here. Now all you have to do to view one of the uh, clips is touch it. And that's an eight second clip. I check the second one out. You can see the range. This in the background here, this is a backhoe, and it's quite some distance from the camera, but it catches the image fine. Let's try another one. It's just me passing through. But this is exactly what I want. There's some, some storage trailers. I want to make sure I can catch an image of anybody who's messing with those. And the backhoe itself, just in case anybody wants to mess with the equipment. Covers the area quite well, and the video quality is pretty good. I'm very pleased with it. And as I say, it uh, it picks up motion at a pretty fair distance. And when I'm done here, all I have to do is back out of the application. It'll bring me back to live view. Back out of that will bring me back to the screen where we had set our Wi-Fi connection. I'll back out of that. It'll prompt me to say it's going to disconnect the camera. That's fine. You can disconnect the camera. And I'm done. The Wi-Fi unit in the camera will reset itself after about two minutes so it won't continue to waste your battery power. Uh, all in all, I think it's going to be a great solution for the need that I have. and uh, I'm impressed with the performance of the camera. It's Cam Park, and I've had one of their cameras in the past, so I don't doubt that I'll be happy with it. hope this helps.
What's interesting is that it's saying not to use rechargeable batteries are not recommended because their rechargeable batteries have low, lower voltages, lower voltage output and poor performance under low temperature. So they're actually saying for that part, you're gonna want regular double A, eight of them. But the top part, which I've removed, I actually have it sitting out in the sun. This part, I think, has its own lithium rechargeable battery because when I sh when it was shipped, um, you can see here it has that, but it didn't come with any batteries. So I think it has a built-in battery that charges, obviously. So you have your regular double A's, and then this is like one in compact unit with the solar um, cells.